Nice, buddy. We got Sweet. him. Did you see that one come up out of oh, the school? Oh, God, yeah. There's still so more down much there, too. Fun. Finally, we got one to go. Whitefish on Lake Superior. By far, this one's battling good. By far, my favorite, maybe not by far, but right up there with lake trout in terms of how much fun whitefish are to catch and how good they are when you get home and flay them up. Like, such a cool fish. And up until now, we've only chased them through the ice. That's a nice fish, buddy. Yes, it is. And now we are here on the open water catching Lake Superior whitefish. Look at that. That is what it's all about, man. Sweet. Isn't that fun? The best part about that is right on that Northland coffin spoon, the same bait we'd be using out here if we were ice fishing and we're catching whitefish on Lake Superior in the Lund. It does not get any better. That is so cool. What a fish. We're gonna get him unhooked, get him in the live well, and that is a way to start our morning here on Lake Superior. Big old whitefish. So many like big schools of these things just coming through. There's so much current right now. Like the lake is alive. And we finally got one to go. Beautiful. That one kind of had him shoot up on me and I just dropped it and he smoked it. He's already at the boat. Nice. Thanks for scoop. Oh, and he oh, just popped oh. off. <laughs> a little smaller one, but still. Another Lake Superior white fish right there. Perfect eating fish, but I think we finally figured something out here. Jigging little spoons and just keeping it aggressive and then just tapping it on the spot. Oh, did you get that catch? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just kind of jigging aggressively and then just tapping it on the spot when they come into play. But there we go. Another one. Grant just caught that one, had dropped back down, and there's an active school, and that's two within 10 minutes, so let's keep it up. All right, that's two fish, very, very quick, both on Northland coffin spoons. Um, you know, colored, I, gold is always a staple for me, especially ice fishing, so that's kind of what I started with here, and we got that one. And Busker, you had a- Orange and chartreuse. Orange and chartreuse, right. but both coffin spoons, you know, they have a nice rattle in it. They kind of have this flicker tail on it, and then a treble hook. No bait on it necessary, so, um, you know, again, lighter weight walleye gear. These are the same rods that I'd use for walleye. Seven foot mediums, fluorocarbon leader, braided line to stay vertical. Again, 45 feet of water is where we're finding them right now, so you want to use braided line. And I shouldn't say want to. you pretty much need to. It'd be pretty hard to feel a, feel a bite in 45 feet with mono. So um, use a braid, use a fluorocarbon leader, Lake Superior, again, pretty clear water down there. So yeah, that's, that's two fish, very, very quick on both on Northland Coffin Spoons. So there's a lot of current down there too. So we wanna, you know, stay heavy, but you can't be too big for whitefish. Again, pretty small mouths on, on whitefish. So you do want to, uh, you know, find a dense lure, one that cuts current good in these Northland Coffin Spoons do just that. So let's get back down there. Got him. <laughs> you get that one to commit out of the group. It's like we're seeing like groups of five, six, seven fish. And usually there's this one interested that's going to come and bite you. Like the whole pack doesn't come. If you can try to lure one fish out of that group, that's key. And that one came and did it. They fight so hard. Here he is, Buster. That's a nice fish. Look how cool that is, hey? Really cool. Boom! We got him. Yes! That there is a solid. Oh, there's a bunch. Yeah, get back down there. <laughs> Let me try to grab him. Solid. Lake Superior Whitefish on. Again, that gold Northland coffin spoon. Same spoons that we use ice fishing are working here in the open water. Whitefish are by far my favorite fish to eat out of the lake, and they are so fun to catch. And we're gonna definitely take our, take our fair share home and fillet them up and, you know, bake them, grill them, whatever. They are such, such good table fare. It's a ball of muscle. <laughs> they are, they are so strong. And it's just incredible to see them out here on Lake Superior in the open water. I mean, it's it's not something you hear about 
all too often. You know, you get open water out here, you get the boat, and so many people are just trout, salmon, you know, whatever. But definitely an uh, you know overlooked species of fish during the open water period of time. But the populations of fish, this how many fish we're seeing is. It's truly remarkable, like there's a lot of fish down there. He's all over it, man. Look at that school of them, buddy. Look at that school. So many fish. <laughs> That's a big school. One thing about the live scope is you it's definitely not necessary to, to catch these fish, but what it allows you to do is just absorb so much more information just because you get such visibility under the water. You know, right now we can see pretty much, you know, 80 feet all around the boat. And one thing we've noticed is, you know, if there's one thing about Lake Superior too, it's that this conditions, conditions change so much. You have so many variables. When that wind dies down, the fish movement slows. When the wind picks up, the, your fish really start moving again. And you'll just, you can tell that. I mean, it's really hard to notice that with a traditional 2D sonar. So that's one advantage of the live scope is it just helps you pay attention and helps you absorb that information, right? Whenever that wind picks up, we're just constantly seeing fish come across the screen. And when that wind died, like an hour ago, there was nothing moving, right? So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just a ton of variables out here. Is he on me or you? Oh, you missed him, <laughs> Busker! <laughs> uh, and right now the wind is blowing and a lot of fish are moving, which is which is pretty fun. So, and uh, but yeah, that kind of segues into boat control and how we're approaching this this style of fishing. Again, when there's a lot of fish moving, we don't need to move our boat around. Um, we're just spot locked here in 45, 47 feet of water and you know just staying here we can just let these fish come to us there's so many fish down there and again when they're moving there's a lot funneling right by us so um when that wind died we didn't see any fish coming on the live scope then we moved our boat around and we try to you know spot lock and drop on fish but again it, it just pays us to stay stationary here when there are a lot of fish moving around so that's cool that's that's five or six in the box now that's uh definitely enough for a, a awesome whitefish meal and uh, hopefully we can catch a few more here because this is absolute blast there we go man that thing just chased it up oh that's fun <laughs> look like he had another one with him this one just stopped the coffin spoon there a little different fishing than walleye fishing Trout fishing. Here we go, nice fish. Right on. It's another two, three pounder. Another great white fish on the coffin spoon there. Another two, three pounder. Wow, oh, what a fun fight. Can get this one in the box and get back down there. Hope we can get a few more. Grant's going with a gold coffin spoon. I got a little chartreuse and orange there. And when uh, we seen those fish on the graph, and what I did is I dropped to bottom, and I slowly took it away from it, just kind of just twitched my wrist, twitched my wrist, and watched the rod load up, and then I hit him. Kept pressure on him the whole time up. Fish on. Got him. Heck yeah, buddy. Heck yes. This feels like a good one. This feels like a good one. They battle so hard, and catching these things on walleye gear is such a blast. That's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. Man, they fight like a trout. <laughs> Look at this. Boom, and that one choked it. That one absolutely choked it. Oh, that's a rush. An absolute rush. 
And that's a nice whitefish. Come here, buddy. Right there. That's how you want to see them eat with that coffin spoon down their mouth, like right down the throat, right? Beautiful. That's a good whitefish. And I would say this is kind of our average size out here on Lake Superior. You know, solid two, two and a half pound fish that are, I don't know, 21, 22, 23 inches. These whitefish can certainly get a lot bigger, they can get a lot smaller, but this is this is a good average, maybe a little bit on the upper side of the average. Great fish, delicious table fare, and man, they put up a heck of a fight. There we go, we're gonna get him in the live well because he's a spraying blood all over the boat. I am covered in <laughs> but that's how you wanted to eat though when they uh when they're not going to release very good that's when you know you had a fish that was uh pretty aggressive and turned on now whitefish as a general rule your whitefish are always going to be right on bottom sure there's going to be a few that suspend five ten feet up but the majority of them one to two feet right off bottom and when you see them come in you want to work them up right and if you have 2d graph just watch them on your sonar with your live scope you can see them coming from a long ways away you work these fish up just like a lake trout they will chase you up right if we're kind of keep our bait stationary and jig it on the spot they don't want it you have to tease them up get them to work up in the water column and that's when they hit so again they're just like a lake trout where they'll chase you up you know they'll be five feet under the surface of the water they'll kind of drop back down drop your spoon back down they'll chase you down and kind of chase get them to chase up again that's all it's about is getting them to chase just like a trout very similar to lake trout fishing but using lightweight gear northland coffin spoons it's an absolute blast now when we kind of talk about locations to target white fish it's a lot a lot of similar you know a lot of similarities between some open water and ice fishing you want to be on kind of steep breaks access to deep water again white fish are uh, they're a species that uh, you know thrives on break lines and they can just roam and they can search for food um, you know whether it's kind of more a little more gravel a little more sand I, you know we see them on kind of all different types of, of bottom structure but the one common you know denominator between all of these is access to deep water shallow water and kind of that break right a little more subtle break here um, in that you know 35 to 50 foot depth so Use your electronics, you'll graph these fish. Again, they're always close to bottom. Your, your, your herring, which is also the same as a Cisco or a Tulabee, all the same things, those tend to suspend more up in the water column, you know, maybe 20 to 30 feet down over deeper water. But whitefish, again, use your electronics, your 2D, your live scope, whatever you guys have, keep an eye on the bottom. They're usually gonna be within that, you know, the bottom five feet, so drive around until you graph them again there's no sense in, in fishing these things until you graph them so especially out on lake superior here a lot of the structure is very expansive so a lot of a lot of area to roam but uh, you know a lot of area to, to hold fish as well so we're just going to make a little bit a little bit of a move here we're not going to get on plane or anything just idle you know 500 yards this way or that way try to graph a fresh pot of fish hit spot lock and drop baits down on them again so lake superior hit uh Every kind of species, I think, so, you know, so far this year, trout, salmon, walleyes, smallmouth, pike, and here we're catching whitefish, so Lake Superior truly has it all. kind of thinking it was another whitey but get that one back that's cool something different there we are. that was fishing blind there is so much current right now a little smaller guy but heck yeah boom there's so much current right now out here on on the lake and that's something that we're really noticing not a bad fish put him in the live real quick and that's something we're really noticing is that the current picks up and slows down about every 
half hour, 45 minutes, it really changes. And it'll even change 180 degree direction. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. I've got a nice little, nice little spider web going there. Um, but uh, kind of what that tells you or what we're seeing is, you know, it's, you'd be vertical, j vertically jigging and then all of a sudden you can't see your bait on the Garmin, right? And I'm not too worried about seeing our baits on the graph. Like it's not a, not a deal breaker. You don't need that to catch fish. So in times like that, you know, just pitch out around the boat, kind of find, find that bottom and kind of work it up, you know, 10, 15 cranks and let it fall back down. And we're taking that knowledge from what we've seen on the Garmin, right? These fish want to eat in an upward manner. So cast out, let your bait hit bottom, you know, just kind of slowly work it up, jig it up like that for, you know, 10 seconds. And then I just open my bail, let it fall back down to bottom and just kind of repeat that process. And that's exactly what just happened there. That fish followed it up quite a ways. Um, so, you know, again, doesn't directly, the Garmin's not directly helping us catch more fish. It's just, you know, kind of assisting and kind of, you know, absorb more information and kind of see the behaviors of these fish. And that's really what it does. It just gives you visibility underwater to, to really see the behaviors and what these fish are actually doing. Got them. Just watching these schools come through, man, it is so much fun. And there are it's incredible amounts of fish down there. And when you see that one, it's never like two or three or four that chase you. It's always this one that comes up out of that pack. And you can tell he's determined. Fishing isn't, you know, I, fishing can be a lot better than what we're experiencing here today, but at least we're getting bites. At least we're getting bites. White, oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good fish. Boom, right there. Look at that guy. Heck yes. That makes my whole day, man. That is so much fun. They are just choking. That Northern Coffin Spoon Gold. This is a standby for me. Um, you know, obviously these come, baits come in a lot of colors, but gold is just something that does really well on Lake Superior. You know, whether you're, you're winter time or open water here, but you know, expand your, you know, expand your horizons on Lake Superior fish and what there is to target out here. You know, so many people are, you know, yes, trout are probably my favorite, but Sam and walleyes, smallmouth, but you know, right here on, on Lake Superior, you have access to tremendous whitefish fishing, you know, here in the, the Schwamigan Bay, Apostle Islands area. So that's awesome. Grant just caught one. I just dropped down and stuck one. Oh, just barely hooked too. Oh, nice net job, buddy. <laughs> yeah, there's a big school down there and only one came back and turned and hit it. That's him right there, that's thick fish. Just battled the whole way up too. And he popped off right in the net, like Grant's was deep in his throat. That one was right there, you can see where he's hooked. Nice fish there though. Drop down and see if we can't get another one. The show one. Just threw that one in the line. I know, dude. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy action. Absolute insane action, man. Look at that one. Nice Boom. One too, That's a big one, dude. Jesus. Big one. How thick that fish is. And that one chased me up super far. Like we're talking, chased me up 20 feet and then boom hits it and that's what is so exciting about whitefish is they don't stop they don't quit they're just like a trout and they can provide all the action and even better table fare than anything else out here in my mind whitefish is high on my list oh man you go through those lulls but then you have times like this where we just caught three in the past 20 minutes so it's you stick it out and uh you know you're going to be rewarded with good things here on lake superior that's awesome we're going to give her one more cast and see if we can catch anything. But if not, we have had a pretty tremendous half day. I mean, not even a really full day on the water and uh, you know, caught, caught quite a few fish. Yes, I think fishing could be a lot better. I mean, just the amount of fish we're seeing down there, I think you could come here and have some spectacular days. But, you know, we did well with, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 whitefish, gorgeous fish too. Like, you know, maybe two just smaller ones, but, you know, everything else was two, three, four pounds. So great to see, so much fun. You know, just come out here on Lake Superior, find, you know, I, I love sand. I, you know, it's kind of a sand break, right? Schwamigan Bay, there's a lot of these around. Um, you know, up on the, you know, northern parts of Lake Superior, up in Canadian waters, 
it's more rock. There is some sand up there as well, so you can kind of do the same program, kind of no matter where you are along the lake. But Schwamig Schwamigan Bay here is one of my favorite spots to uh, fish whitefish in the open water, and yeah, absolutely incredible. Grab some walleye gear. You know, most of us already have a, a walleye stick. You know, six foot six to seven foot six rod with some braided line. You know, tie on a eight to ten pound test fluorocarbon leader, and <laughs> really grab your ice fishing tackle because that's what these Northland coffin spoons are is uh you know one of our go-to ice baits for walleyes and whitefish alike so you know not a whole lot to it drive around till you find these fish 35 to 50 feet of water drop baits down and hang on so thank you guys for watching we'll see you next time